You judge me, you condemn me, you discarded me. Well, <laughs> not anymore. Winning! So, it looks like the wave of support for Cat Williams isn't slowing down anytime soon, especially now that Charlie Sheen has supposedly hopped on board the supporters' train. Not only is he backing up Cat, but he's also sharing his own tale of how Hollywood supposedly drove him to financial ruin. I mean, we're talking about a guy who is an absolute legend in his prime. Remember when he was ruling the TV screens and pulling in a mind-boggling $1.8 million for just one episode of Two and a Half Men back in 2010? Crazy, right? But somehow, somewhere along the line, he hit rock bottom. So what's the deal? How does someone go from swimming in riches to barely scraping by? Well, hold on to your seats because we're about to take a deep dive into the juicy details. So let's rewind back to 2018, where in some pretty hefty court documents, Charlie Sheen dropped a bombshell claiming he was knee deep in a dire financial crisis with a measly $10 million to his name. Now to most of us regular folks, that still sounds like a pretty hefty chunk of change. But for a guy who used to rake in a jaw dropping $1.8 $8 million per episode, it's a bit of a reality check. He's even gone as far as asking to slash his child support payments, citing a drought in steady work, and being essentially kicked out of Hollywood's VIP club. You know, the term blacklisted in Tinseltown carries some serious weight, and Sheen's claiming he got slapped with that label. But it's not because he was on the wrong side of some political debate or anything like that. According to one bigwig studio exec spilling the beans to deadline back in 2011, Sheen basically became uninsurable. That means nobody wanted to touch him with a 10-foot pole because they couldn't guarantee he wouldn't go off the rails again. And let's jog our memories a bit here. Remember when Sheen's life took a nosedive and his CBS show, Two and a Half Men, went on hiatus? That was back in January 2011. Dude checked himself into rehab, battling his demons of alcohol and abuse, making it his umpteenth stint in rehab. Plus, there were those troubling accusations of domestic violence swirling around. Then to top it all off, Sheen, who was raking in the big bucks as the highest paid TV star of the time, decided decided to go all in, demanding a whopping 50% raise. But he didn't just stop there. Oh no, he also publicly threw shade at the show's co-creator Chuck Lorre, which basically sealed his fate. Chucking Sheen off the show became a no-brainer for the higher-ups. After that messy breakup, rumors swirled about Sheen finding a new comedy gig, but insiders were as skeptical as ever. So, there's this whole chatter going on about whether there's more to Charlie Sheen's Hollywood exile than meets the eye. You know, his wild escapades are pretty much etched in stone, but even before he was ranting about tiger blood, he wasn't exactly a walk in the park to work with. Back in the golden days of Two and a Half Men, his co-star John Cryer spilled some beans. According to Cryer, things kicked off all rosy, with Sheen supposedly two years clean when the series first hit the screens. But then, bam, Denise Richards files for divorce in 2005, and by the time season two rolled around, both Sheen and Cryer were freshly single. Cryer spilled the tea in his 2015 memoir, So That Happened, revealing that Sheen took a nosedive into the the dark side. By the time 2010 rolled in, filming became a real struggle. Cryer painted a picture of Sheen looking like he'd just wrestled with a grizzly bear, gaunt, pale, and sweating bullets. And his acting? Well, let's just say it started to resemble a cheesy soap opera. Lines were forgotten more often than not, and Sheen's balancing act on set sometimes involved clutching onto furniture for dear life. Warner Bros. jumped into the fray, backing up these claims, saying Sheen's antics were like tossing a grenade into an already tense atmosphere on set. Sheen eventually entered rehab in 2011 and the show went on hiatus to give him the time he needed. That's when things really fell apart. When Sheen declared he was clean and ready to rock again, production didn't jump back on board. And you can bet your bottom dollar Sheen wasn't having any of it. He went all out pointing fingers at the show's creator Chuck Lore and threw enough shade to cover the entire Hollywood sign. Sheen even went as far as calling Lore some not-so-nice names in front of the whole TMZ crowd. He said he's a stupid, stupid little man and a P-punk that I'd never want to be like. But things hit rock bottom when Warner Bros. officially gave Sheen the boot in March 2011. They didn't hold back, sending a hefty 11-page letter to Sheen's legal squad, spelling out exactly why they were handing him his walking papers. They didn't mince words, citing felony offenses, self-destructive behavior, and downright erratic conduct. It was like a laundry list of Sheen's greatest hits, trashing hotel rooms, domestic violence charges, you name it. They also slammed, your client has been engaged in dangerously self-destructive conduct 
and appears to be very ill. The letter included numerous examples of Sheen's problematic behavior, like his ceaseless tirades against Lore, his refusal to enter rehab, his 2010 trashing of a plaza hotel room that caused at least $7,000 in damages, and his 2009 arrest on suspicion of domestic violence. They also claim that Sheen was missing rehearsals, forgetting his lines, refusing to collaborate with colleagues, and making inflammatory comments poisoning key working relationships. A lawyer for the studio sent this letter, obtained by TMZ, to Sheen's lawyer, declaring, your client has been engaged in dangerously self-destructive conduct and appears to be very ill. And Sheen? Well, he wasn't exactly waving a white flag. Nope, he doubled down, brushing off the whole ordeal like it was a minor inconvenience. He even took a jab at Lore and those silly shirts he had to wear on set. He said, Now I can take all of the bazillions, never have to look at what shisk asterisk asterisk K again, and I never have to put on those silly shirts. An unrepentant Sheen told TMZ the firing is very good news, saying in a statement, Now I can take all of the bazillions, and I never have to put on those silly shirts. Sheen had also been wrestling with addiction demons for what feels like forever. I mean, we're talking way back to 1990 when he first dipped his toes into rehab waters. But staying on the straight and narrow? That seemed like a never-ending uphill battle. In 98, things took a seriously scary turn. Sheen ended up in rehab not once, but twice in the same month. First, there was that brush with death after a near-fatal overdose. Then, just to keep things interesting, he got slapped with a DUI. And let's not forget 2010 and 2011. Sheen was hitting the rehab scene again, this time after some epic benders that would leave most of us seeing double. But get this, despite all the signs pointing to get help ASAP, Sheen was all like, nah, I'm good. In fact, he straight up dissed the whole AA scene, saying it wasn't made for someone as special as him with his supposed tiger blood and Adonis DNA. But Sheen's battles weren't just behind closed doors. Oh no, his laundry list of troubles spilled out into the headlines. Hospital visits, assault charges, you name it. It was like watching a soap opera play out in real life. Then, in a surprising twist, Sheen dropped a bombshell in 2019, revealing he'd been battling HIV since 2012. He owned up to his relapse, admitting he hit rock bottom after 11 years of sobriety. Watching his own wild rants from that time? Embarrassing doesn't even begin to cover it. But sometimes hitting the lowest of lows is what it takes to finally start climbing back up. And for Sheen, it was realizing he was just plain tired of letting everyone down. So after all the drama and uncertainty, Charlie Sheen made a comeback to TV in 2012 that had everyone talking. His new gig, Anger Management, kicked off with a bang, pulling in a record-breaking 5.47 million viewers for its premiere. But as the saying goes, what goes up must come down. And boy, did Sheen's ratings take a nosedive. By the time the show wrapped up in 2014, it was barely pulling in 500,000 eyeballs per episode. Now, while some of the blame might land on the material itself, Sheen didn't exactly help matters with his antics behind the scenes. Remember when he clashed with co-star Selma Blair? Yeah, that was a whole mess. She apparently had enough of Sheen's laid-back vibe and constant tardiness, so she spoke up. Big mistake. Sheen threw a fit and threatened to walk if she wasn't booted off the show pronto. And guess what? Within a day, Blair was out, courtesy of a scathing text from Sheen himself. But that was just the tip of the drama iceberg. Sheen wasn't shy about airing his grievances, especially when it came to guest star Lindsay Lohan. He called her out for being late to set, conveniently ignoring his own habit of causing delays. And get this, when he claimed to have laryngitis and halted production, rumor has it he was actually dealing with some visible health issues related to his secret HIV diagnosis. So, after Charlie Sheen got the boot from Two and a Half Men, in swoops Ashton Kutcher to fill his shoes. And get this, they didn't just replace Sheen's character, they created a whole new role for Kutcher. But even with Kutcher in the mix, the possibility of Sheen's character, Charlie Harper, making a comeback lingered in the air. Fast forward to the show's finale in 2015, and Chuck Lorre, the mastermind behind it all, extended an olive branch to Sheen. He wanted him to make a cameo in the last scene, spewing out some of those infamous rants that had everyone talking. But Sheen wasn't having it. Nope, he had other plans. He wanted a heartwarming moment, setting the stage for a spin-off with him and John Cryer. We thought it was funny. He didn't. Laura wrote. He wanted us to write a heartwarming scene that would set up his return to primetime TV in a new sitcom called The Harpers starring him and John Cryer. In the end, Laura went with his gut and dropped a metaphorical piano on Charlie Harper's character, quite literally, using a body double. And let's just say Sheen wasn't exactly thrilled about how it all played out. In a 
now deleted interview, he threw shade at Lore, saying he couldn't care less about his fate on the show. I don't care if he lives or dies, he slammed, per The Hollywood Reporter. To go that long with that immature and that completely unevolved and that stupid in my face, really? But Sheen didn't stop there. Oh no. He tossed in a veiled threat, leaving everyone scratching their heads. He boasted, saying, you must feel safe where you live. And then there's the whole story of ensuring him becoming way too expensive. You see, before they even start rolling the cameras, producers gotta play it safe and take out insurance. It's like a safety net in case any of the cast suddenly can't work. And believe it or not, this insurance thing can eat up a hefty chunk of the budget, sometimes as much as 2% of a million dollar production. Crazy, right? Now here's where Sheen's wild antics come into play. See, the cost of insuring an actor depends on how reliable and healthy they are. And given Sheen's very public escapades, his insurance premiums shot through the roof. I'm talking tens of thousands to a quarter million bucks just to cover his back. But get this, some filmmakers were willing to roll the dice, like Roman Coppola when he cast Sheen in A Glimpse Inside the Mind of Charles Swan III in 2012. Problem was, nobody would touch Sheen with a 10-foot pole when it came to insurance. Coppola took a gamble, but he couldn't get any coverage for the film. Now, let's talk about Major League Three. Sheen was all set to reprise his role, but producer James G. Robinson pulled the plug in 2011. Why? Because when Sheen doesn't show up for work, it's not just a headache, it's a financial nightmare. Robinson spilled the beans saying they could lose half a million bucks a day just waiting around for Sheen to get his act together. And in Hollywood, time is money. Also, Charlie Sheen is no stranger to court. Back in 2005, his divorce from Denise Richards turned into a headline-grabbing saga, earning its spot in the ugliest ever splits list, according to ABC. But wait, there's more drama to come. Fast forward to 2010, Sheen found himself in hot water again, this time pleading guilty to aing his then-wife Brooke Muller during a vacation in Aspen. Instead of facing three years behind bars, he got off with 30 days in rehab, some probation, and anger management classes. Some folks thought the punishment was a slap on the wrist, especially Valerie McFarland, the ex-police officer who handled the 911 call that night. But Sheen being Sheen, he didn't exactly take the whole thing seriously. Nope, he strutted out of the courthouse like he just won the lottery, declaring he's off to Disneyland. Fast forward again to 2017, and TMZ caught wind of Sheen being slapped with a lawsuit by an ex-girlfriend. She claimed he exposed her to HIV without giving her the heads up beforehand. Sheen eventually coughed up $120,000 to settle the case in 2022. But hey, it's not all doom and gloom for Sheen in the legal department. Remember that massive wrongful termination lawsuit he fired at Warner Bros. Television and Chuck Lorre? Yeah, he walked away with anywhere between $25 to $100 million in his pocket in 2011. So, Charlie Sheen's career has pretty much hit snooze mode since the anger management finale in 2014. Sure, he's popped up here and there for some guest spots on shows like The Goldbergs and Typical Rick, but let's be real, the job offers aren't exactly flooding in. In 2018, things took a financial nosedive when Sheen headed to court, asking to slash his monthly child support payments from a hefty $75,000. Dude claimed he was practically penniless, with less than $10 million in the bank and zero income to show for it. He even dropped the the bombshell that he'd been blacklisted from a bunch of gigs in Tinseltown. But wait, it gets worse. The guy was swimming in debt, owing the IRS nearly $5 million in unpaid taxes by 2018. And that's not all. Rumor has it he owed his lawyers a pretty penny too, not to mention struggling to keep up with mortgage payments on his Beverly Hills mansion. In 2019, word on the street was that the foreclosure ferry was knocking on his door, demanding over 86 grand in back mortgage payments. It's a far cry from the days when Sheen was raking in a cool $1.8 million per episode on Two and a Half Men. Now, if you've ever scrolled through Cameo, chances are you've stumbled upon Charlie Sheen trying his hand at making a quick buck. As of 2023, he hit the pause button on taking requests. But judging by his 261 reviews, most of them glowing with five stars, he was really putting in the effort. Sheen jumped on the Cameo bandwagon back in 2019, and despite keeping his videos short and sweet, averaging around a minute and a half, he was charging a solid three $350 a pop, and pocketing a hefty 75% of that, according to Telegraph. Sure, his delivery might have been a tad awkward at times, as seen in this birthday message that made its rounds on Twitter. But hey, fans were eating it up. One buyer gushed about his absolute perfection, while another praised his dedication and effort in every single video. Now, despite his dwindling screen time, it looks like she
Sheen's making some positive changes in his life. During a chat with Jay Leno in 2019, he spilled the beans about his decision to sober up nearly two years prior. No crazy rehab stints or high-speed chases with the cops involved, just a simple realization that it was time for a change. Sheen shifted his focus to his health and family, with work taking a back seat. And he is also pumped to dive back into the game with a newfound excitement. It just hit me that I knew it was time to make a change, he said, quipping. It didn't require some crazy rehab stint or a shootout with the cops. It didn't require anything super dramatic and crazy and front page news. Rather, it was about shifting his perspective. I really focus on my health, my family, and work will come next, he said per people. I'm excited to be excited again. So, it was pretty clear from the get-go that his success hinged on one thing, his attitude. So besides getting clean and getting serious about his career again, Sheen made a big leap forward when he started owning up to his past mistakes. In a chat with Yahoo Entertainment in 2021, he spilled the beans about a major regret, turning down help from then-CBS CEO Les Moonves. Turns out, Moonves offered him a ticket straight to rehab on the Warner jet, but Sheen brushed it off with a laugh. Looking back, he wishes he took that offer, because it set off a chain of wild events that he's not exactly proud of. These days, Sheen's all about taking responsibility for his actions. He chalks up his headline-grabbing outbursts to addiction and a boatload of stress. But he's not just sitting around wallowing in regret. Nope, he's ready to flip the script and learn from his past. He's got big plans for Act 3 of his career, promising to show the world what he's really made of. And hey, if he has his way, those past antics will be nothing but a distant memory as he moves forward and focuses on his craft. Let's take a peek at some of his other's ventures. They were actually pretty cool. So back in 2006, Sheen dipped his toes into the fashion world by launching a clothing line for kids, cleverly named Sheen Kids. Fast forward to 2011, and he was making headlines left and right, breaking Guinness World Records like it was nobody's business. First, he smashed the record for the fastest time to reach 1 million followers on Twitter, averaging a whopping 129,000 new followers every single day. But wait, there's more. Sheen also snagged the Guinness record for being the highest paid TV actor per episode during his stint on the hit show Two and a Half Men, raking in a cool $1.25 million per episode. And if that wasn't enough, Sheen was wasn't shy about cashing in on his social media fame. He signed on with the Adley Marketing Agency, specializing in Twitter and Facebook promotions, to keep those endorsement deals rolling in. But hold on to your hats because Sheen wasn't done yet. In 2011, he announced a nationwide tour titled, My Violent Torpedo of Truth Defeat is Not an Option, kicking off in Detroit to a sold-out crowd and breaking Ticketmaster records in just 18 minutes. Sure, the tour had its ups and downs, some shows left fans feeling a bit disappointed, while others received a more positive reception after some adjustments were made. And let's not forget Sheen's venture into the world of e-cigarettes. He became the face of and partnered with Nico Sheen, a line of disposable e-cigarettes and related products. Now, it seems maybe on his way for a comeback. So back in 2019, he was chatting with Jay Leno, all fired up and ready to jump back into the game. But you know how it goes, it was a slow burn from there. Fast forward to March 2022, and bam, Sheen lands a leading role in a new dramedy series called Ramble On. Now this was a surprise move, but it was legit confirmed by Deadline. And get this, the show's being put together by none other than Doug Ellen, the mastermind behind Entourage, and it's got Entourage alums Kevin Connolly and Kevin Dillon on board too. But hold on to your hats, because the plot thickens in April 2023. Sheen pulls off the ultimate comeback when he scores a recurring role in Chuck Lorre's first comedy series for HBO Max. I mean, who saw that coming, right? Deadline dropped the bombshell, revealing that the show, titled How to Be a Bookie, would see Sheen sharing the screen with lead Sebastian. Sebastian Maniscalco and a bunch of other heavy hitters. And while the details were a bit hush-hush, word on the street is it's all about a bookie trying to make ends meet in the world of sports gambling. It's like Hollywood's giving Sheen another shot at the big leagues. Who knows, maybe this time around he'll knock it out of the park. Now, with all the craziness surrounding Sheen, some folks are saying he brought it all on himself with his questionable choices, and they reckon being blackballed was just par for the course. But what's your take on it? Do you agree with the crowd, or do you think differently? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and we'll catch you in the next video.